pleased to be joined by Karen King Choi, who is a gallery manager and educational coordinator at Paul Robeson Galleries at Rutgers University in Newark. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you, too. Uh, never assume that people know who Paul Robeson was and why he was so important. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Well, Paul Robeson is known as Rutgers' most famous alumnus, and there's good reason for that. He was a football star, and there was a lot of controversy about um, race when he was playing football with Rutgers. During he was, what period of time? During, I think that was in, like, the early 19... 1910s. 1910s, right? Yeah, 1910s. And um, he was also a very famous actor and an activist. He was very outspoken. Played Othello? Played Othello, probably right. his most famous role. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. And so the galleries, the Paul Robeson mm -hmm. galleries, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Well, we were founded um, in 1979 with the mission. We wanted to um, go along with some of the things that Paul Robeson found most important. So cultural democracy is a big one, freedom of speech, um, access. So not just people who are rich or who have a certain race or who are of a certain education, being able to contribute to and look at art or participate in performing or things like that, but just that everybody should get a chance to do that. So what kind of work is exhibited? Well, currently we have an exhibition called The Undesirables. It actually Undesirables. It closes today, unfortunately. It's the last day to see it. Um, so that one's about creatures that we live with without wanting to in urban and suburban environments. So we've got rats okay. and spiders and cockroaches and just very interesting work. We like to pick uh, themes that are very broad that people have a lot of opinions on. So what about they, moving forward? Um, moving forward, well, um, we don't have an exact lineup that we can publish just yet. But we have, you know, something exciting happening with Express Newark. Okay, talk about Express Newark. Yeah, okay. Well, Express Newark, it's a, I think we're calling it a cultural center or an arts and community center, but it's also a conceptual framework that goes along a lot of the same lines I was just talking about, about access and cultural democracy. So a lot of the arts, culture, and media department at Rutgers is going to be moving over there. So the media department, for example, and there will be some photography and printmaking going on. The Paul Robeson Galleries is also going to have space, so some big galleries, some dedicated workshop spaces, and some artist studios. But the whole point of this is to bring Rutgers, Newark, closer to Newark, you know, to be integrated. Well, there is the tendency for institutions, colleges, universities to sort of be off on its own, sort of isolated on a hill, and we don't want you know, that to continue. We want to be part of Newark. Um, Chancellor Nancy Cantor has a lot of key phrases that she uses, like being an anchor institution, being a third space where it's not just university or it's not just community. Community just meaning right, people who are not part of the university, but that it's all together. That's a neutral ground where people can meet on equal playing field. Is it hard to do that? I mean, Nancy Cantor, Cantor we mentioned her before. Nancy is the uh, former president of, of Syracuse University, yeah. comes to Newark to be the chancellor, the leader of the Rutgers Newark uh, campus. Rutgers Newark, the most, uh, one of the most diverse uh, universities in the nation. Yeah. What does it really mean, though, and how challenging yeah. is it to bring the community onto the campus, the campus into the community, mm -hmm. when people are like, wait a minute, I don't go to Rutgers. Yeah. That's a big I mean, challenge. I happen to be a Rutgers right. grad. It's part of my world. Uh -huh. I taught there, as I told you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's part of my life. Mm -hmm. I'm connected. But if you're not a grad, you're, you know, if you're not an alum, you didn't. Yeah. What's the connection? Yeah, it's, well, I guess we're going to find out more about the challenges as we go forward. But um, right now, we know that we're facing. Well, first, there's the level of just art in general. A lot of people who aren't into the arts, they don't think that they belong in art galleries. They don't or, think it's accessible either. Right. They don't, they think it just, it's something that people do, you know, just like these weird people do off on one side, and they don't <laughs> think it applies to them. So maybe they're not visiting museums and galleries. You've got to break those barriers down. We do, Is that yeah. what the ropes and galleries are trying to do? Yes, absolutely. And it's hard. And even if for people who are part of Rutgers, for, to get them to step through the threshold <laughs> into the art gallery, when it says free entry and we have someone friendly standing there saying, come in, it's open, it's free, this is for you. It's, there's a psychological barrier, I think. Um, How did they pull you into this? <laughs> uh, well, I started as a gallery attendant uh, back in 2008 um, because I was already interested in the arts. I was already comfortable being in arts institutions. You didn't grow up in Newark, did you? No, I didn't. Where'd I grew you up? up in uh, Creskill, New Jersey. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Northeast. Bergen County, I Bergen think. County. Yeah, that's right. What's uh, your feeling? Before I let you out of here, we have a few seconds before we uh, sure. go to black. Um, what's your sense of the city? There's a lot of exciting stuff happening, and I'm sure lots of people are saying that. Um, but maybe it's just because I've been 
part of this arts community in Newark now for a little while. Um, I see more and more excitement, more energy coming up. But then the challenges of having to face things like, you know, race, which has always been an issue, and you know, people start talking about um, poverty and the lead poisoning that you know came up in the schools last week. We're still going to keep facing those issues. Um, but there's lots of artists who are very energized right now, especially with the new mayor who has this you know, initiative. Baraka. Yeah, Ross Baraka. Um, and also with uh, Nancy Cantor, because she's so into this idea of the third space, the idea of us being part of Newark and not just in Newark. You're bullish on the city. I'm sorry? You're bullish on the city. I am. I wish I could move here. I have to convince my husband. <laughs> he See, doesn't that's the it. sell you have to make. I know. I do. I do. We'll try. Well, Karen yeah. King Choi, yes. a gallery manager, an educational coordinator at a great operation called the Paul Robeson Galleries at Rutgers University in Newark, New Jersey. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence, and by the Newark Museum, in cooperation with NJTV and 13 for WNET. Funding for this special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato at Newark Museum has been provided by Bank of America, PSE&G, Cone Resnick, University Hospital, Newark, New Jersey, Johnson & Johnson, Prudential Financial's Global Communications Department, and by the North Ward Center. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.